All right, hey, what's up, everyone? This is Mike Deary, and this is a new episode of Rock Guitar Power TV. Um, today, we are looking on my computer, and I'm going to show you how I um, edit, arrange, and record my ideas uh, so that I can, you know, work on my songs and keep things organized. So, what we're looking at right now is Logic. I use Logic to do most of my production when I'm writing. I use Pro Tools when I actually record and finalize stuff. Mostly because my Pro Tools rig is uh, much higher quality, but Logic is a little bit easier and a little bit more fun uh, to work with, so I've been using this a lot more. So, uh, let me jump right into it. What we're looking at are a bunch of things that I started recording, but whenever I start to record an idea, what I'll first do is record the basic idea and then find out what tempo it is. So this first chunk of audio we're looking at right here is just me when I just recorded it and let it play. So if I play this back, uh, what we'll listen to is just me laying down the idea. So that was the main chord progression. As this plays, I actually have a metronome that allows me to tap the tempo so I could see what the tempo is. And after I let that play and figure it out, we could see down here that the tempo ended up being 110, okay? Now, it's very, very important to do everything to a metronome or a drum beat, and you want to make sure that you do it very evenly so that you can keep ideas organized. If you look at the grid here, we can see that these lines are broken up into bars, um, which helps me, you know, when I got to cut and paste and move things around, I know exactly how many bars I'm working with. So after I find out the tempo... What I'll do is either use a metronome, if I enable this and then record, you could hear that I have a metronome. But metronomes are a little bit boring to work with, so what I usually do is immediately when I'm about to record, I'll find a drum beat to l record along with. And in Logic, it's really cool. I just go to this button that says Media, and then I could type in, um, now these are all different loops. So if I want drums, um, let's say it's um, maybe world um, and percussion or drums. I forgot where exactly I did it, but I think I put um, Latin in. And here we have funky Latin drum. And I think now what I could do is just hit these and sample them. And the one I found was this one right here. So... What I could do is just click this and drag it and drop it right onto my uh, sequencer here, and then I have my drum beat. So that's how I find a loop and then lay it in. Now, as you can see, I can move this around, and this function allows me to, to repeat it very easily. So once I find it and lay it in, I just put it right here and then copied it for a whole bunch of bars for a long, long time. Now what I do on the bottom here is record my actual takes. So... Now I'm doing it to an actual drum beat. So I'll just record that a whole bunch of times. And then what I'll do is use a repeat feature up here that I could loop a certain amount of bars. So what I'll do is find out how long the riff is, which it's actually just two bars long. So I'll highlight two bars. And repeat it. And then what I'll do is just search for a good two bars that sound good when I loop them. And this was it. So then I could just cut and cut these these two bars out and then repeat them. So I could just take this, it will be my loop for that main rhythm, and then I can move it wherever I want. Alright? And then I did the same thing with this other chord progression. And this one sounds like this. All right, so then I did the same thing. I found two bars right here and cut them out. So now what I do over here on this rhythm track is that I start to arrange the rhythm the way I want it. So what I end up doing is having this first part repeat four times. So that's a total of eight bars. All right, and then I take the second rhythm and put it in for four bars. Okay, so the total loop is going to be 12 bars long. 
which will be from here to here, okay, or about there, okay? So that will be my 12 bar loop, and then what I could do if I want is to actually just bring this over and loop it, all right? So now I could just let this loop, and then I could jam to it. As you can see, I copied and pasted this 12 bar loop a few times just to kind of extend it out. But now, as long as I have this 12 bars cut out, I have a loop made. So now when I want to practice, this will just keep playing and I can jam on top of it. All right, great. So that's all there is to it, really. Um, that's how I start off with this rhythm. Um, and this is the one that you saw me soloing to in the last episode, all right? So after I figure this whole rhythm out, um, I'm going to load up another one to show you. Now, this is what it looks like after I clean it up a little bit, okay? I have the main rhythm that keeps repeating, and here's the actual solo that I recorded from, um, from another video or from another take. So this is just the drum beat, this is the main rhythm, and then here's the solo line. Uh, you can see I use some coloring to help know which track is which, and actually there's a feature here that's hiding all the other tracks. Okay, we can see here are these other tracks I had. I don't erase them just in case I need to pull something from them, but there's a feature that allows me to mute them, and then I could hide them so I don't need to see them. So this keeps my production very clean. And that's the basic idea on how I, you know, start recording and looping ideas. I do everything to you know, one or two different drum takes. Um, now, these are just basic loops. They're not that, you know, um, unique. But what I'll do when I'm done uh, arranging the song is hire a real drummer to actually, you know, work and do live drums. But this helps me, you know, record and, and um, compose the piece so that I can get all the parts and all the ideas out. So that's basically it. One thing I wanted to show you is real quick on the website where you could find this backing track because I made it available for anyone who wants to jam to it. So if you go to rockguitarpower.com forward slash guitar lessons, this is where the Rock Guitar Power program is. Um, up top here are all the paid um, uh, programs, but on the bottom right, we have the free content and members area. We have song lessons, how to play chords, backing tracks, and all these others. If I go to backing tracks, it's going to take me to where you could access this. Now, if you're not a member, um, just try to click on this. It'll ask you, um, you know, if you're not a member that you could join for free, you just got to enter your name and email. So do those steps and then you'll be able to click on it and gain access. And this is what it looks like when you get here. So here's all the backing tracks. We have some for blues, some for rock. But at the bottom here, we have RGP TV. And this is the soloing rhythm in B minor. So you could come here, press play. And this loop is about five minutes long, so you can just let it play and jam on it. So, and this tells you the chord progression and um, you know what key it's in. So that's about it. Hope that helps. Have fun, and we'll see you in a new episode really soon. Be sure to leave comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see more of, and I'll definitely hook you guys up. Take care.